Hello and uh, welcome back to another Mission Models video. Today we're going to uh, demonstrate the use of uh, clear coats and specifically today uh, our MMA005 semi-gloss clear. All right, we've discussed it briefly in the previous video, uh, the, the basic uh, workflow tutorial video. You'll remember that we this was the uh, fuselage half that we painted with the yellow and just did some very brief uh, washes on it. So we're going to apply a semi-gloss semi clear uh, to this half. This is the other half of the same kit, and you'll notice it. It's two different, uh, well, similar camo patterns, but a little bit different. They were done at different times. This half here already has semi-gloss clear on it. So it's kind of like a cooking show, and we're going to uh, use this side for uh, decaling since the clear is already dry. Again, this side does not have a semi-gloss, but on the other hand, you can see the eggshell finish uh, on this half of the fuselage. In theory, we don't even have to add a clear coat. We can decal right onto this, but we're going to clear it anyways and show you the process. So the next step is going to be uh, mixing the clear gloss coat. So hang in there for a second. So the first step again, like we like to do, is uh, use an epoxy mixing cup. This is one ounce or uh, in other words, uh, 30 milliliters. Same thing, milliliters, ounces, depending on where you live. So we're gonna take our semi-clear uh, clear gloss, number MMA, uh, I apologize. Uh, here's the semi-gloss uh, clear, MMA005, all right? Just gonna shake it up. And we always talk about using 30 drops. So just for ease, we're going to add 30 drops of uh, clear gloss. That's quite a bit of clear gloss in there. You can see the consistency of it. Clear gloss, uh, 30 drops goes to about the eighth inch mark. We like to add 30 drops just because it gives us more paint or clear or primer to work with rather than using just say like 10 drops, which is a tiny amount of paint. Um, but just depends on your needs and what you're doing. Now, you do not need to add poly to the clear coats. But what we are gonna do is we're gonna thin it down just a little bit. You don't have to. We like to, it's our preferred way to spray. So I'm gonna add just a few drops, three, about four in there, just to thin it down a little bit. So maybe it'll go on in thinner, lighter coats. And we just swirl it up like this. Our clear coats are automotive grade. They're ultra, ultra durable. When they dry, they're, they're chemically resistant. They're impervious to all decal setting solutions, uh, oil, enamel washes, and so forth. We don't really recommend oil and enamel lacquer washes because you can make all your uh, washes uh, out of uh, the uh, Mission Models uh, you know, paint system. Very quick, very easy. So we're gonna get started here and we're just gonna spray it. It's very, very quick, very, very easy. So we're just gonna pour it in here, just like that. When you spray clears, you always want to have a wider spray pattern, so that way you get nice even coats. You don't want to go on heavy. Just build it up. Start off the work. That's it. Got our clear coat on there. And just let that dry. It will self-level to a nice, beautiful, smooth finish. When you hear your airbrush make that noise, that means that we are uh, out of clear or paint and you don't want to keep spraying because then what you're doing is you're just spraying uh, straight air through the airbrush, will, which will then accelerate the drying time of whatever residuals left in the airbrush. So as soon as you hear that noise where it's just uh, air and really no paint, clear, primer, whatever, it's time to stop. We can, again, clean the airbrush just like we have in the past. Very quick, very easy. A little bit of thinner, right down in the cavity there. 
if you're in doubt, and you can always just wipe out a little extra residual here, just like that. It's nice and clean, and just a little bit more uh, thinner, just in the cavity there. That's really all you need, just drops. You don't have to go crazy and fill up the whole uh, bowl of the airbrush. That's clean. We're good. And one last thing is that if you are in doubt and you think you might have a little bit of residual on your needle, just very, very carefully, just kind of wipe it a little bit off. A very delicate touch so you don't bend the tip of your needle. Because if you bend it, then you will get an irregular spray pattern and you run the risk of clogging. But that's it. It's, it's clean and ready for your next color. All right, so we're about to apply decals uh, to these one of these fuselage halves. Uh, if you remember, this is the uh, fuselage half that we just put the uh, semi-gloss on. And we'll put this aside while it dries. I mean, we can almost do it now. It's basically dry, but the longer it dries, uh, you know, the more durable it becomes. <clears throat> All of our clear coats, again, are, are uh, chemically impervious. You can use any type of uh, decal setting solutions, uh, any type of washes you may have, enamels, lacquers, whatever. Again, we prefer to make all of our washes out of Mission Models paint, so you can go acrylic on acrylic. It's awesome. So we'll use this fuselage half. Like we said, it's already been clear coated. It's dry, and we can just move forward. We've got our decals here floating along. We're gonna remove uh, this one here, and we'll just put it on this uh, paper towel, and we'll take this one, put it on the paper towel. We like to use Microsol and Microset. Modern decals are very, very thin, and they can be very, very delicate. That's a good thing, because of the way they settle, the way they react. Some setting solutions, such as Microsol, can be very, very aggressive. Uh, they can cause the decal to wrinkle up very quickly. You know, when that happens, you just want to let them sit and do their thing, shrink down into panel lines and, and various other uh, details. These might be card graph decals. Uh, not 100% sure, but it says made in Italy. That's where card graph comes from. So we'll see. Anyhow, we'll take our micro set. Got a little bit of reference off in the background there. All right, so I'm just going to do like this. This is again not about accuracy, it's more just about the process. And we're just going to get those decals on there and we'll just go right here. All right. Just kind of work it a little bit. And we'll take the next one, one more setting solution. So again, we're using uh, micro set. There are a lot of different decal uh, setting solutions out there. We've been using Microsoft micro set for many, many years, and it's just, we find it to be the perfect go to. All right, again, we like said. Not about accuracy here, but apparently these are where they go. And I think I'm actually using the wrong cross here, but whatever, it's not about that. Just wipe off a little excess there. And the setting solutions, even though we probably really don't need them here, but I always use them no matter what, I just do. So we'll wipe out any air bubbles, kind of work some of this stuff down into the uh, into the panel lines. My method. So, right. so those are on. Now I'm going to take Microsol. 
Microsol is pretty aggressive, especially on modern ultra thin decals. Just be cautious because some of these decals can really act very, react very quickly to various different types of aggressive uh, setting solutions. The Microsol really start to soften up those decals quickly. You just want to let it sit. Once the decal really starts to soften, you want to be cautious because you can easily, easily tear it. Easily. You just want to be patient. And just let them do their do their thing. Let the just kind of get some of the air bubbles out. And then after this, once the decals are set, we'll hit it with a, another coat of uh, semi-gloss just to seal them in. You can see when it starts to react, you'll start to get little various bubbles, things like that. You just want to leave them alone, even though I'm kind of not, but you can already see that it's starting to slightly wrinkle, so that's okay. That's what it's supposed to do. So let's let these dry and we'll be uh, right back and then we'll move on to the, uh, the next step. All right, be right back, give it a little drying time. All right, so we're back and uh, we've applied our decals to the fuselage half that uh, already had the MMA005 semi-gloss clear on there. And if you take a look, you can see how the uh, decals have settled into our panel lines. You can also see there's no silvering. You can't see any kind of decal film whatsoever. Laid down perfectly, ready to go. This was the half that we had sprayed previously. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to spray the semi-gloss clear on here again, just in this area, just to seal the decals in. So again, let's just mix it up real quick. Again, we like to start with 30 drops, all right? Like I said, just gives us something to work with, substantial amount. But if you were gonna mix up all this clear, you could, you can clear coat the, you know, entire model anyway. So this is a bit much just for one little section. Again, I like to add just, you know, just a couple drops, just for good measure of, uh, the MMA002 or three thinner, you know, two is a two ounce, three is a four ounce. Just because I like the clears to go on a little bit thinner. It's the only reason. And we'll just pour just a little bit in, just into the cavity there. We don't have to fill up the whole cup. We're gonna, when we clean the airbrush before, as we've talked about, you're gonna have some residue from water and uh, previous thinner cleanup in your cavity, in your uh, air chamber here, so you're gonna wanna flush that out, just to be sure. All right, so now what we're gonna do is in just nice methodical coats, just in the area of the decals, okay? So that's that. Now our decals are, will be sealed. First thing we're gonna do before anything else, again, is as always, our clear coats are extremely, extremely durable. It's a different formula than the paint, not just gloss paint or semi-gloss paint or flat paint, it's a different chemical makeup, you use it exactly the same. It's automotive grade, and again, chemically resistant to not only decal setting solutions, but RC nitro fuel. You can use our clear coats on basically anything. And just a little bit of thinner in there. Spray it through. And just for good measure, Excess, just kind of get that out of there, out of the bowl. All right. And we're gonna let the clear coat, uh, let the clear coat dry. And we will then do a couple quick 
washes on it just real quick again we're going to do a whole separate video on washes and then we'll do um, a quick flat coat so let's let this dry and we'll be back in a moment okay so we've got our decals on what we've done here is we sprayed a semi-gloss base let's just say across the whole fuselage half we applied our decals beautiful all right and then what we did was we sprayed a little bit more semi-gloss over it so we can seal the decals we recommend truly letting the clear coats dry 12 hours yeah, maybe a few hours but to be a hundred percent sure and you know let the when you let the uh, the clear coats dry you know 12 hours 24 hours you get the maximum durability we're going kind of quickly let's dry about an hour give or take all right so what we're gonna do is now that we've sealed our decals in to protect them is we're gonna make another very very quick wash and we're gonna start with somewhat clean area I'm gonna move the work out of the way and what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna add 30 drops of thinner it's in a one ounce or 30 milliliter epoxy mixing cup to the, about the 30 drops is about to the eighth inch mark I'm gonna add six drops of our favorite tire black for weathering okay one two three four eh, five six swirl that up a bit that's all you gotta do and then we add if you remember from the other videos water to the half ounce mark carefully don't splash everywhere okay so what the water does is it also helps break the surface whoops surface tension we're gonna start with a new fresh clean area all right and when you add water to the thinner and paint uh, mixture uh, the thinner is not going to be as aggressive because we've basically diluted it all right. I don't know if we'll be able to really see this because we've got some dark areas let's just see how it goes panel lines are not as deep as they were previously it's gonna be hard to see going over black you make your washes you can adjust accordingly and in this situation you may have to apply a couple times and one of the other Last video we talked about sort of wet sanding any excess wash back over. And what's nice about doing a clear over your decals and over your base coat is then uh, you're not staining, potentially staining your paint. Keep your paint job the way it is and you can always kind of remove any excess and I'll show you how you do that. It's quick easy we're going back over some of the panel lines that we had done previously and I'm not being as controlled as I could be but that's okay because we are going to remove it with a different method so I'm going on a little heavier Again, I'm using a liner brush, kind of keeps things controlled. Again, I'm trying to also stay out of the uh, frame so you can see. I always find that washes tend to work better over a flat surface versus a gloss surface. It's just me. We'll touch a few things here. Okay. Quick. Always also found that 
doing washes over decals or areas where we've decaled can be a little more difficult because you've really created less of a uh, now the panel line is, is more shallow in other words I should say I don't know what I was trying to say there but I did okay so we've got this here we're gonna let it dry for a minute we'll be back in a second I will show you how to remove that excess okay so basically what we've done is we've uh, done a basic wash on here you can see some of that slop and, and and whatnot and one thing that we did discuss in the previous videos about how you can uh, once you seal the decals or if you seal the paint you use a clear coat you can go back and very carefully uh, you know wet sand uh, any excess depending on obviously the surface and the model you're working on uh, with an aircraft it's uh, a lot easier because a lot of you know, flat surfaces. So I have a, uh, a, a 2,500 grit uh, piece of sanding pad. I'm just gonna dip it just in a small, little bit of, you know, lightly, just in a little bit of water. And I'm just gonna carefully, just very carefully. light touch our clear coat is not has not been drying for you know 12 hours but you can see how we're starting to kind of clean that up a bit everything will stay in the in the panels wipe off some of that water right you don't want it to be necessarily be too wet you just want to go in nice passes and remember we're no different than, than you guys we just have our methods how we like to do it so you don't want to be too aggressive Essentially, we've cleaned that up. Our clear coat was not 100% dry. But you get the basic principle of uh, what we're doing here. Just kind of clean that up a bit. Get a little bit over here. Just light, light touch. If your clear coat is not properly cured and you start doing this too soon you could start to remove the clear because remember it is water-based just like everything else and what we are is doing is we're sanding back with a little bit of water I'm just using a microfiber cloth just because it's nice and soft this is not a shell model by any by any means but you can see our our panel lines here um, but I don't want to be too aggressive go through the clear and start attacking the decal itself. Just be cautious. Now we can, in theory, if you want your lines darker over the decal, you can apply again and you know repeat the, uh, the process. So very quick, very easy. The next thing we'll do is we'll uh, we'll apply a flat coat. Okay, so. What we've done is we've again we've base coated with uh, what well, we've done a, a semi gloss clear decals sealed the decals with uh, another light uh, coat of uh, semi gloss just in the area of the decals you don't have to go back over the whole thing we've done a very 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 quick wash remember in this video the clear coats were not 100% cured so you will want to wait at least a few hours 12 hours is best just for peace of mind. So the next step is we're gonna do a, uh, uh, we're gonna use MMA 004 flat clear. Now, the thing about flat clears is that when you go on heavy, you're gonna end up with a semi-gloss. The heavy coats of, of flat will then, if you go heavy, 
you will cancel out all the flattening properties because you're building up too much of the carriers on the surface so you will not end up with the flat coat that you're expecting. Now the thing about Mission Models Flat Clear is that you want to dust it off. You want to dust it off from a distance, okay? So we've basically put the uh, Flat Clear straight into the airbrush. We have not thinned it whatsoever. Mission Models Flat will not turn chalky or anything like that. But, like anything, you want to spray it on at a distance and you want to cloud it on. We're just clouding it on from a distance. Now you can see where we have our semi-gloss here. We're just going to cancel that all out. And what we want to do is let this dry. So what's going to happen here is that we're going to build up layer after layer, but each dry misted layer needs to dry first. Then you do the next one. So I'm spraying our flat on from a distance, just kind of clouding it on. let that dry so we want to kind of go on in different directions from a distance let the clear kind of the flat clear just kind of settle onto the model and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit this with a hairdryer just real quick So when you hear that noise, you don't want to keep spraying because you're just going to end up drying out whatever's in there with air. So we just add a little bit of uh, uh, flat to the airbrush. The reason why we put more in there is because we are spraying from a distance and we're just kind of going wide open. So we're using a lot more paint or I should say clear coat than we would standard just paint. Coat after coat. You will see as it dries, it will get flatter and flatter and flatter till you have a dead flat. Again, like we said, is that modeling takes time and patience, and practice. Nothing will do it for you, only you can do it. Just practice. So again, I'm probably. I'm about 12 inches away, you can't see the airbrush, but I'm just clouding it on. The longer it dries, the flatter it'll get. As you can see, at least here on the decals, you can see that it's just getting flatter and flatter and flatter. If I go on heavy, I will end up with the semi-gloss. And if you also notice, we, uh, we don't have any chalkiness, but add a little bit more clear. You will use a lot of flat clear because you also want to spray essentially wide open with the airbrush, just dusting it from a distance. Different angles. I don't like to use a hairdryer, but just for the demonstration. But as you can see, it's continuously getting flatter. It takes time. Now, personally, I don't think that things should be dead flat. They should have a very, very slight sheen to them no matter how flat a subject is when sitting out in the sun, you will have a slight amount of reflection. And when you go dead flat, your model can then end up being, or appearing to be very, very two dimensional. You want to add the dimensionality to the finished model, such as on, you know, the backbone of the fuselage and so forth. It really just makes things pop. And you got to remember, you know, where the sun's going to hit it. Is the sun at, at noon? Is it hitting the top of the, the fuselage here? And, and, and so forth. You will have a very slight eggshell sheen.
We are moving along fast. Yes, this does take a few steps, but it's what you want. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of any residual build up there. Just cloud it on. I just build up. Letting the flat dry is the key. Even if it looks, has a little bit of a semi finish to it, let it dry. I only use the hair dryer just to uh, move along in the video. I don't necessarily recommend it. It will be dry to the touch using the hair dryer, uh, but uh, there you go. It's, uh, it's basically uh, done. I mean, it's as flat as you're gonna get. You can see the difference, semi, flat, we could keep going and going and going, but you know, my opinion, it's just right. And if you want to bring back a little bit of, uh, of uh, a little bit of sheen, you can hit it again with semi-gloss and kind of bring it back. So that's it. It's a quick lesson in clear coats, decaling, whatnot. We uh, go through these steps pretty quickly so we can keep the videos short. Um, we always suggest uh, taking your time, not rushing, be patient, practice, mistakes will happen, they can always be corrected, it's just the nature of the, uh, the process. And uh, like we always say, we all make mistakes, but it's all about having fun, taking your time and you know, accelerating in your skills and learning more and more every day. So, there you have it.